played a top 10 team. They were superior to us uh, tonight. Got our butts kicked. Got to learn from it. 24-hour rule is still in place. And, uh, and we got Minnesota next, next up. Coach, I'll be brief. Um, just before I ask my question, um, from where I sit, uh, you got the toughest job in sports right now, not with the game, but to come in front of us to have to talk. So I think there's some courage and nobility in that. So with that being said, what life lesson uh, could you share with your team or just share with people in general having to stand before us right now uh, after this experience? Well, um, you got to be a man. Being a man is taking responsibility in everything that you do and accountability. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's a life lesson in itself. You, you live long enough, you'll go through some things in life that'll, that'll make you <laughs> say, it's just life. You know, you, you, all you can say is it's life. You know, somebody asks, what's wrong? Life. And, uh, and so um, you, you never want to turn anything down. This too shall pass at some point in time uh, based on my faith. So I don't know when, <laughs> but, but it, it, it will pass at some point in time, and I'm believing it. I'll never lose faith in that and uh, just where we are right now. Harlan, obviously the report came out uh, Thursday that you, were, you guys were told Wednesday about the signs in, in Michigan. I was wondering how were you able to, I guess, how did you handle that? And, you know, with a redshirt freshman making only a second career start, did that make it even more complicated for him coming into this game? I don't know if I would say complicated, but, you know, he was, as you saw early in the game, I might even mention that uh, he was going to the sideline. Because it's, it's something that our guys have done before with teams that do it within the game. We, there are some teams in our league that are pretty good at doing it, getting signals within the game, which is all part of it, which is legal. And we know that. But um, so uh, running to the sideline, getting the call, then going back into the huddle, telling the guys, as opposed to just getting the signal, everybody getting the signal from the sideline. So that was a slight change, but that's not an excuse. That's, that's not, I don't like excuses. Um, uh, we, we, we have to play better. We have to play better. And, uh, and, and that's the goal. That's the goal to start playing better and not beat ourselves. Uh, as a former player in the program and, and having been here for some of the success, um, seeing the last touchdown go in, 49 nothing, biggest home loss in the history of the stadium, I guess, how do you kind of reflect on that and what did you tell the guys about how to move on from this? Um, whether you lose by one or 49, it's a loss. Um, first of all, so um, you just tell you just trying to like I, what I told them was, hey, we need guys. For, let me tell you, I, I told them so. I've been trying to make sure we stay together. That's been my number one thing. You know, my number one thing since I got since since I've been put in this position. And so some of that, and doing some of that, I've probably you know. They're kind of like, okay, that's okay that he did that, you know, a little bit. Not nothing crazy, but it's not really who I am as a person because I was thinking I was trying to be compassionate towards the players, if I'm making sense, all right? But I told him, I said, now I'm just going to be me all the way. I told him, I said, I was trying to be compassionate. We've been through this now. We know what it is. We're in an adverse situation, and now we've had enough time to think about it and mull it over. Now it's just like, let me be me far as, okay, if you're not here where you're supposed to be on time, every day, all day, like you're supposed to be, okay, now you won't play, because that's me. That's me. But, uh, you know, be, I am a compassionate person. I understood the situation that we were in, so I was trying to just make sure everybody stayed together. Now it's going to be like, who you see out there are guys you know that are all in, going to give us everything all day, every day. I'm talking on and off the field. And it wasn't nothing super egregious before, but I'm like real, I'm big on time stuff and respect. So, you know, that, that's what's going to start showing up over these next several weeks. Coach, uh, 
11 penalty, 11 penalties, over 100 penalty yards tonight. Uh, how much importance does that hold to you, and uh, how do you plan to address that going forward? Very, very important. So it's, it's, it's like I told him, it's the second. I didn't know it was 11 again, but that's what it was versus Washington. So we, you can't play top 10 teams in the country and have 11 penalties. So I didn't know the exact same number. It's the exact same number against those guys. And that's you saw the results, almost very similar results. And so um, we got a ways to go. Uh, to get to that, you know, get to that level, um, but we played top ten teams and 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 had our worst penalty games. Can't do that. Can't beat ourselves. So it still falls back to discipline. We had started getting we had started getting better at those things, um, but we still got to continue to work on it. Obviously, Harlan, back here. Um, the Two things. One, along those lines, you had the, the legal uh, formation penalty or whatever it was on the, on the punt again. Was it the same situation? And, and can you, how do you get that corrected so you're not re-kicking and losing yardage or, or more? Good so. question. That was a different guy. That was a different. So last week was a guy within the, the line itself. And then this week was a guy out wide, a, a gunner type guy. Um, and and uh, they check with the ref. I, I got to watch the film, so I don't want to just say any old thing. But they, 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 in practice, we always check with the refs. We have refs at practice. They check with the ref and do and, and do all the things they're supposed to do. And then I, you know, that, that, that's part of just being disciplined. And we just got to continue to push that grim on on our guys and doing the little things right. And um, can't continue to keep doing that. Secondly, you've got a couple more top ten opponents and notable defenses on the schedule. I'm wondering how you figure out how to get enough juice out of your offense in the coming weeks and uh, enough playmakers and, and whatnot. Well, we're going to have to really, really study up what, um, who's available for us, who our playmakers are, and try to get them the ball as much as possible in, in, in any kind of way. Because we do have some guys, some talented young men on the, on the offensive side of the ball that, could, that can make some things happen. And so we just have to figure out what's best uh, and what works best for us to be able to attack those different teams that we're going to be facing coming up and, uh, and see if we can make some things happen. This team has gone through a lot of adversity this season, but is this just the lowest point yet? <laughs> it might be. I, it got a little, I thought it was low last week and then lower, you know. So, um, but you got you to shake it off and keep fighting. That's all I know. That's all I know. Got to shake it off and keep fighting. Uh, with Michigan's defense, what exactly made them so hard to score on in this game? Well, like I said, uh, going into the week uh, or earlier in the week, they, um, they, they understand the defense. They understand where they're supposed to be, their assignments, and their coach will. And so when you're a sound, disciplined defense, that, that's been coached well and guys do what they've been coached to do, then you have a chance to be uh, pretty good. And so that's that's who they are and that's what they showed tonight. Harlan, I guess just after a game like this, the way things have gone the last couple of weeks, do you, are you concerned at all about keeping those guys together the way you were talking about earlier, changing some of your demeanor and everything? Do you, do you Are you worried about this last stretch and guys sort of splitting apart at all? Right, well, from the locker room that I saw in there, that, that was part of me saying what I said, too. I, they're, they, they keep fighting, man. They, they are. They're, they're in. You got guys speaking up, you know, guys that are passionate and that care and uh, correcting others. They, they are, man, I'm, I, I love this group. I love this group. I know we're not getting the results that we want, but I love this group of young men, and I appreciate all they've been doing. And uh, I, think, I, think, I think we'll be fine. I, do, I really do. Arlen, after tonight, as you try to move forward with the season, do you, do you go back to this moment in kind of this game film, or is it kind of trash it and, and try to move forward to next week and, and keep showing, like you said, the resiliency of this group? You, you have to watch it. You have to watch it. You know, face reality. You got to face what, what really happened and, uh, and then get better from it. Um, and know that, it, like I said, it's still a 24-hour rule, um, but you want to learn from it just like we watched last week's film and, uh, and try to get better from it. And... Uh, and, and, and look to look to finish out the season the right way, where we're not beating ourselves. Make others beat us. Make them really truly beat us. And then then we uh, then I can come up here and be like, oh, they beat us. 
We didn't help them beat us. And uh, that, that's, that's the goal right now, is to finish up these uh, next five games without beating ourselves. The, the sign-stealing allegations, how did you find out? Was it something you already knew about? And was the possibility of not playing this game ever real? Uh, I got a call Wednesday night uh, from our athletic director, uh, Alan Haller, and he had got a call from the Big Ten, and the Big Ten I got a call from the NCAA from how I understand what happened, and, um, and that's when I found out. And, and uh, it, it, was, it was talk of what, you know, was, I was asked what could we possibly do to them, just that and other, what you think, and I said what I said, but I, I wasn't really expecting much to come from it, to be honest with you. Uh, at one time, somebody did mention possibly not possibly playing the game, but I'm like, let's, you know, play the game, you know, play the game. It don't get you till it gets you. Just remember that. Uh, Harlan, uh, how's Eric Caden making his just a second career start? I was wondering what you thought about how he played overall against the number one scoring defense in the country, and then also Sam being put in there, a true freshman, obviously in a tough spot when you're with Noah, unavailable, I assume, still. Yeah, I mean, but th those guys are getting better um, and, and are good players, you know, Sam, Sam and Caden. So, um, I'm glad they 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 were able to even get reps, uh, and obviously Caden is the starter. But even Sam getting some reps tonight, I think that was good because that, you know, any any time you can get uh, game reps, it's good, it's good. And so uh, I'm glad I'm glad Sam was able to get some. And Jake, said, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about putting Sam in. What you think? I said, let's go, let's get him some reps. And and so you never know when we may need him, you know. So that's where we are. Harlan, you mentioned about the need to refocus and, and all of that. I guess with this group that's, and what they've been through, how do you as the leader uh, recenter them? I mean, is there a way to come back from a game like this? Like, what is the way to come back? Uh, good question. Um, well, well, one of the ways, first of all, um, when, when talking to them, and, and, and making sure they all understand that, hey, and I think they do, but you got to just say it again because you're asking how do you make sure they stay there, understand how penalties and turnovers and not getting off the field on third down are things that will, you can't win football games if, you, if you're doing those things. And so you got to talk to them about it again, put heavy emphasis on it again, make sure they all truly understand because you can fill the room. Everybody understand? Yes, we understand. Or you know, you, if you're mumbling, then they don't truly understand. But yes, we understand. If it is mumbling, then you say, what is it that we don't understand why, about what we're doing wrong to get better? And then they may ex express themselves. So you got to have some dialogue with the team and, and go back and forth. But most times, I, I can already tell you, I feel like most of them are going to say, yes, we understand. We're beating ourselves. We got to get it corrected. And this is how we're going to get it done. And then we stay together, stay unified. We, we, we hold each other accountable on those things. And then we have a chance to improve and get better and possibly win some football games.